and welcome to Vanix Studio. In today's tutorial, we'll be seeing how to create a NPC character or a non-playable character using State Machine in Unity. So we'll be using the Unity Animator State Machine for this purpose. So in case you don't know what a State Machine is, a State Machine is a design pattern followed by programmers in which you divide the logic into states and execute only that part of a logic depending on which state the character is in. For example, in our demo scene, the wizard here is the NPC and this capsule here is our player. So if you play the game, if you move the character near the NPC, the NPC will start moving towards the character and the NPC will start hitting the character if it's very close and the health of the player will start reducing. Now we have achieved this using three states. One is the idle state where the NPC doesn't do anything. The other is the walk state where the NPC moves towards the player. In this state, the NPC will basically reduce the movement speed of the player so that the player is not able to escape. And then we have the attack state where the NPC will attack the player and reduce the health. Now, if you have to do this without the state machine, then you will have to check if the player is in attack state or if the player is in walk state before executing the logic. But Unity Animator allows us to add behavior scripts to every state. For example, to the walk state, we have added a walk behavior script. So all the logics that are pertaining to the walk state can be added inside the script. And the transition between state is totally dependent on how far the player is from the NPC. So we have a parameter called distance from player. And this parameter is passed from a common script on the enemy NPC. So this is how the transition is actually set. From idle to walk state, uh, if the distance is less than 20, it will go from idle to walk. And if the distance is less than three, it will go from walk to attack. And it will come back to walk if the distance is greater than three. And it will come back to idle if the distance is greater than 20. Now let's see how this is executed using scripts. So our player here has a simple player controller. And the player controller has two public static variables which are health and moment force. So these two will be changed by the NPC when we encounter the NPC. So the other is the health display. It's a UI for displaying the health of the player. Then we have the rigid body for the player. And then we have the initialized vector for assigning the force to the rigid body. Then we get the input horizontal and vertical. And depending on the input, we apply force to the rigid body to move it. And then we display the health. In the common enemy controller script, which is basically the core of our NPC, we just take the animator of the enemy character and we take the player game object. Then we calculate the distance between the player and the enemy and then assign the distance from player parameter in the animator. Uh, we do one more thing. That is we rotate the enemy character to look towards the player, no matter where the player is, so that we'll be able to easily move using the behavior script. Now we have two behavior script, one for the walk animation and one for the attack animation. So if you go to the animator and select walk, you can see there's a walk behavior script attached. And for attack, there's an attack behavior script attached. If you don't know how to attach this, just click on add behavior and give the script name. The difference between the behavior script and common c -sharp script in Unity is behavior scripts are derived from state machines and they don't have the start update functions. They have some, something similar, which is called on state enter, then on state update, and on state exit. So when you enter into the animation state, the on state for enter function will be called. And when you're in the state, the on state update will be called every frame. And then on state exit will be called when you exit the state. So inside the walk behavior, when we come inside the walk animation, that we that is when we transition from the idle to the walk animation state, the player controller move force will reduce from 10. So generally it is set to 10. It is set to 10 here. And when it comes to the walk state, the move force will reduce to five. Now while in the walk state, we want our NPC to move towards the player. So since we are already turning the NPC towards the player in the enemy controller script using the quaternion.look rotation, in the walk behavior, we're just asking the NPC to move forward. When we exit the walk state, we are just basically resetting the player moment to 10. In the attack, 
uh, we don't want to do anything when it enters the attack state, but when it is in the attack state, we want to reduce the player health by 0 0.05 every frame. So if you have to do this in a common script like enemy controller, you will have to check multiple conditions pertaining to which state the NPC is in. So to avoid this, using a state behavior actually organizes your code in a much better way and it also helps in performance. This was a simple NPC, so the number of states were very less. Imagine an NPC with a complex behavior. So using a state machine will basically organize your code and also help you with performance. If you want to know more about state machines, we have a complete guide which teaches you how to create a state machine from scratch. You even don't have to use the Unity animator. You can create your own state machine using code. The link is there in the description. If you're interested, just go ahead and give it a read. So that was it for the state machine tutorial. If you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.